Okay, good morning, Councillor Kappa. We can start the meeting. Thank you, Jane. Good morning. My name is Councillor Philip Kappa, and I am the chair of the Education and Skills Overview and Scrutiny Committee. I can confirm that the committee officer has conducted a sound check before the start of the meeting, so I assume everybody can hear me. Can I welcome everybody to, to, to today's meeting, where we are all attending remotely? In addition to committee members, we also have non-committee members, cabinet members and officers joining us to assist with our discussions. For those viewing the live stream or the recording, committee members are identified with an asterisk next to their name. The meeting will be recorded and live streamed and will be available for viewing after the meeting. Should the live streaming fail, the meeting will continue and the recording will be available through the Council's website following the conclusion of the meeting. Can I remind members that translation facilities are available and to select your language of choice. If you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function. You can also use the chat facility, but please note that I may not be able to monitor the chat facility during the meeting. All microphones will be muted. If you have indicated your intention to speak, you'll be invited to turn your microphone on. If you leave your device for any reason, can you please ensure that you are muted and that you turn your video off? So moving on to the agenda. Item one on the agenda is apologies for absence. Jane. Yes, apologies from councillors Gareth Jones, Thomas Jones and Adrian Tansley. Thank you, Jane. Does anybody have any other apologies for anybody? No, okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda. Item two, declarations of interest. And can I remind members that they must declare the nature of any declared personal interests? Any interest, declarations of interest? It would appear not today. So moving on to item three on the agenda, urgent matters. I'm not aware of any urgent matters. Is that the case, Jane? Yeah, no urgent matters, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Moving on to item four on the agenda. Questions to cabinet members, and there are none. I think that's the case, Jane. No questions, Chair. This is going swimmingly this morning, isn't it? Um, uh, sorry, item 5A on the agenda, that, which is the childcare sufficiency, sufficiency assessment for 2022 to 2027. And I think Alwyn Williams will present on this item, and it's on pages 3 to 213 of your uh, agendas. Alwyn. Good morning. Yes, I'm going to run through the childcare sufficiency report that's been submitted. Um, okay. So the childcare sufficiency assessment is a statutory requirement under the Child Care Act. This places a statutory responsibility on local authorities to secure, where possible, sufficient childcare to meet demand. A full assessment is required every five years. The assessments are carried out to identify any shortfall of childcare provision. The data used to complete the CSA has been taken from the self-assessment of service statements collected by Care Inspectorate Wales. Additional information has been provided by Conway Early Years Team, Conway Family Information Service, and the Early Years Development and Childcare Partnership Group and various stakeholders. This data has been broken down into the five local wellbeing needs assessment areas of Conway. The main themes from the CSA is affordability, accessibility and sustainability. A summary of the strengths under these key themes within the CSA are as follows. Accessibility. Feedback from stakeholders was that childcare was good and excellent quality. Qualifications are generally of a high standard across the sector. Childminders provide a broad range of services with most providing a choice of full or part-time care. The supply of full daycare has remained steady despite the pandemic, 
with the same number of providers as in the last CSA. Full daycare settings are more likely to be able to provide care throughout the year and not be subject to staff holiday closures. Majority of settings were aware of the new ALN code. Sessional care is often located on school sites, which helps working parents who also have school-aged children. There are very few waiting lists across the county. Within the outer school childcare type, a high number of staff have a play qualification. Affordability. All childcare providers are registered to deliver the childcare offer for Wales, other than one childminder. Generally, there is a broad range of wraparound care for school aged children across various childcare types, which is often a cheaper option for working parents. Nannies registered under the Childcare at Home Voluntary Approval Scheme allows families to access the tax free childcare and can be a good option for those who work and sociable hours. Sustainability. Since the last CSA, most childcare settings who are run by voluntary management committees have achieved a secure business and legal status by becoming charitable incorporated organisations. The importance of quality childcare became a vital part of the COVID-19 response. The willingness of providers to meet the needs of key worker parents while responding to unprecedented restrictions was impressive. Overall, during 2020-21, the packages of support we were put, which were put in place have helped the sector remain sustainable. A summary of areas for improvements relating to the themes are as follows. Accessibility. Very few providers cater for out of hours, weekend or overnight care. There are pockets of gaps in childcare types in some areas, but in the main, this is offset by the availability within other childcare types. The gap has arisen in Abergella following the closure of an English medium sessional setting. The bilingual local infant school is filling the early education gap as a short term measure, whilst the primary school modernisation processes are underway. There is no registered open access play provision within Conway, but unregistered open access play is delivered during school holidays for less than two hours per session. Overall, there are fewer Welsh medium settings on the coast. This is reflected in the number of Welsh speaking staff and recruiting and retaining Welsh speaking staff. Feedback from the parent survey and stakeholders in relation to children with additional learning needs or a disability show that this can be a challenging area for families and providers. Although most providers are aware of the new ALN code, some additional training is required. More staff in settings need to be encouraged to undertake play qualification training in line with the national minimum standards for childcare. Work to improve the digital skills of childcare providers in preparation for the digital system has commenced. Affordability. A theme from the parent survey was that, that childcare was perceived as costly. Wraparound sessional providers do not open during holidays, leading to increased childcare costs during those periods. Some financial assistance schemes are dependent on specific eligibility criteria. A gap which has caused difficulty is that students are unable to access the childcare offer. This is difficult for those who are lone parents or those who are undertaking training. 
Welsh Government is in the process of introducing the new digital system to deliver the offer. This may present a barrier to those who struggle with IT from applying. Schemes aimed to support children with additional needs go some way to support parents with the cost of childcare, but mostly do not cover the full cost or have strict eligibility criteria. Sustainability. While parents may feel childcare is expensive, providers have experienced factors which can make their provision difficult to sustain. There have been challenges faced as a result of the pandemic and providers felt undervalued at times. Sustainability of out of school clubs has been affected by the number of parents who have worked from home during the pandemic. Recruitment and retaining staff is challenging, particularly Welsh speaking staff and staff to support children with additional needs. Although there is a demand for more flexible childcare, this can be unsustainable for providers. A number of sustainability grants has assisted providers financially, but some face challenges with day-to-day -day overheads. From the parental consultation, this was a national survey which was conducted asking parents their views on childcare. It looked at both the current use of childcare and the demand for childcare. The survey highlighted a large number of families said that they had been affected by childcare issues brought about by COVID. They thought that the quality of childcare was high and the location of childcare was good. They felt childcare providers were reliable and catered for their children's needs. And most parents also said that they knew where to go to get information about childcare. Parents felt the cost of childcare being too high. They felt this was a barrier to accessing employment. Parents of children with disabilities said it was difficult to find childcare that could support their children's needs. Over a third of the parents completing the survey use Welsh medium childcare. Parents would like to see opening hours being extended at different times of the day, during the holidays and more wraparound care. These were the main points identified from the overall report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alwyn, that, for your report. I think it uh, pretty well summarises the, the vast amount of data that's accompanying it, so I'll open it to questions. Uh, Councillor Garfield. Yeah, to have around, um, Catherine, that the uh, Halloween with them and the Rodroviat manual down the big lots of our we bought that from the um, but the one that the role down with that from the degree. In questions, can you manage us on those and Elvin now with a partner, yes, here's the bottle. Um, to go about the media, me three in color, the interfection that in Iran staff your at that split big or some item, and to go about who know where this young. I that's blocky, because I'm a trap around my desider gal, the Tosca not a guilia, a penuth no saga, all the scolagati. Or second thing, a man only with your own partner, yes, ever meet the other in life. It will run nearby, just like you feel here the water. Um, the end with you have a meeting, Mathrin, or an staff your at Yath Gamrai, and Ganad Lethal, my own problem, and Ganad Lethal Ganania, the end with you have a meeting, Mathrin, have a slot drive. Have a social care Wales. I have a discourse of our partner Yath Erich Colum. Um, Oran, um, we have a meeting in Leol and Conway. We can only cross it once in Cali. Um, can now mean never only a letter that power. Um, and then we have it in in Kevnocki meeting. Have our cameras cam project cameras cam are in the breed. Um, man can at least all in Rubasidan Caligotti, but the end we have in my own partner Yath and we 
fwy tyn a mae hynny ar y gweill. Ond os does dim plannu ymanol ar hyn o bryd, mae'r mae CSA wedi dŵad a bob dim ar law fel baseline ydyn hwn fydd y step nesaf o weithio hefo'r cynllun yn symud ymlaen. Gwyth chi bod hynny'n ok. Yn ddeg gwleth, dwi'n yn creu salwyr hynny, diolch yn Thank you, Councillor Garfield. Uh, are there any more questions from anybody? Uh, Councillor Peter Lewis. Well, well, first of all, Chair, uh, thank you for that. Uh, and I thank Alwyn for the uh, depth uh, and quality of the report she uh, presented today. A wealth of information there. I haven't got any questions, more, more comments, really, on the information that's come out of it, really. But one is that... Um, it would appear from the report and the responses that um, in terms of uh, available financial assistance, perhaps wasn't apparent to quite a number of the respondents. And perhaps that's a communication exercise we perhaps need, need to do internally. So uh, parents are aware of that. I think the other thing going forward that um, given the employment situation and whatever at the moment that um, one can't but uh, expect uh, fees to increase uh, significantly over the, over the short term anyway. And so I think that's a, going to be an additional cost. I mean, if you look at the actual uh, cost of childcare against the income levels, they can vary from nearly 100% to a minimum of 20%. So a significant cost. Uh, for, for those families. But I think the one thing that um, going forward, I'd like, um, you know, future council and uh, officers perhaps to emphasise to Welsh Government the importance that this grant funding is, is ring fenced uh, and doesn't become part of the future ANF. Otherwise, uh, I fear it um, will ultimately d diminish it, it, it in value. So they're my comments, Chair. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, are there any other questions or indeed comments? It would have... Oh, yes, we... yes. Uh, Dr. Larry Brown. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you for allowing me um, to speak. Um, as you know, we undertake this uh, child sufficiency audit on a, on a, a five-year cycle. Um, and I must admit, it, it doesn't seem like five years since the last one because it's an enormous amount of work. Um, so I would like to thank um, Kane Wen and Al Wen for coordinating this piece of work and, uh, and the K to have joined us today. Um, and, you know, the enormity of it, we, we, we can see the wealth of information and, and, and really rich information which helps us plan for the future. And we know that other local authorities Authorities have, have, have really struggled to collate this within the, um, the expected time scale. So um, I, I think I just don't want to go without thanking the team for their work on this. On this. Thank you, Larry. Um, we've got Councillor Julie Fallon, Cabinet Member for Education. Thank you, Chair. I, Larry said really what I was going to say, just to thank the team, really. It is an awful lot of information. Um, and obviously things have been changing so much over the last two years with places open, closed, and, uh, you know, it's been very different to what's happened in, in previous years. And, and I guess just to comment and say how amazing, you know, the provision is that, that's out there, the fact that they did manage to continue majority of time through COVID and certainly in terms of the offer that they made to, to families of key workers. So, you know, it's something to be proud of. And yeah, this gives us the tools to work on where we need to improve and where there is perhaps any provision that that's that's lacking or that needs that additional support as Lori has said so um so yeah it's good and as peter said it's something to be conscious of moving forward that we we ask welsh government to protect that money to ensure that that there is provision moving forward because the earlier intervention that um that children have uh, the better outcomes they have so obviously the better provision we have at a younger age is just really important so um yeah but mainly just thank you to the team and uh, really unusual and difficult circumstances over the last couple of years to to collate this information deal thank you councillor julie are there any other questions it would appear not so oh, councillor peter well i just thought chair uh, you've got nobody yet proposed the recommendations as they are I'm happy to do that. Thank you, Councillor Peter and Councillor Geoffrey. Yeah, I was going to um, propose the recommendations. It's so important what's been done. I think the officers have done a really fantastic job. 
Um, so I, I'll second the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jeffrey. So uh, I will now take you to the recommendations, which are on page three, heading two, 2.1 and 2.2, that the Education and Skills Overview and Scrutiny Committee consider and endorse the Conway Childcare Sufficiency Assessment 2022 to 2027 and the Action Plan in line with the statutory requirements highlighted in the Child Care Act of 2006. And the recommendations to Cabinet are that the Childcare Sufficiency Assessment for 2002 to 2027 be approved and the action plan be implemented to assist in future service provision within Conway Borough Council. We've had Councillor Peter propose and Councillor Geoffrey second. This will be a formal vote as it's a recommendation to Cabinet. So, Jane. Okay, thank you, members. So please state if you're for or against or abstaining. Councillor Carol Beard. Uh, for. Councillor Phil Capper. Obliged. Councillor Jeff Corrie. For. Councillor Mary Doyle. For. Councillor David Johnson. For. Councillor Garfield Lewis. Obliged. Councillor Peter Lewis. For. Councillor Tristan Lewis. Obliged. Councillor James Lestad. Obliged. Colette Owen. Obliged. Sue Shotter. Obliged. And Councillor Ken Stevens. Obliged. Okay, thank you, members. That was unanimous. Thank you, Jane. So I can confirm that the votes in favour of the recommendations was indeed unanimous. Uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is item 5B, which is expansion of the free school meal entitlement to all primary school learners. And this is being taken by David Williams, and it's on pages 214 to 241 of your agendas. David. Yes, uh, I'd like to sh share my screen with the PowerPoint for you, uh, if that's okay. Uh, the detail of the uh, proposal is is in the in the report. Uh, this is the Welsh government's initiative to expand free school meals to all primary school leavers. Um, we support this initiative, and we'd like your backing to acknowledge the preparation needed uh, to get the most out benefits from the offer of meals to all primary school uh, learners. Um, so as if we look at the aim of the of the of the initiative um the primary aim is to tackle food poverty so that no child goes hungry at school um, regular meals and eating patterns will help children in their current well-being and ability to learn whilst at school and also secure better health outcomes for the, the future um, it will remove the stigma sometimes associated with receiving free school meals. We would like to go further and not to refer to the, uh, the school lunch, lunch as a free meal and make it a part of the education experience, learning um, how to act with food and socialise during meal times. Uh, make it an enjoyable experience as part of the school day. Additional aims uh, of the initiative is to increase the local food production and distribution of food uh, in the locality to have the obvious um, benefits to ecology and local economy. And rolling out this initiative, there are opportunities to make better partnership working with the Healthy Schools Partnership through public health. And also, of course, um, to improving the infrastructure for providing school meals within our own um, ERF and uh, other agencies to, to do that. If we look now at the main considerations and, and the effect on um, to, to Conway Co County Borough Council, um, for us to get the best out of this uh, initiative, we need to have a clear message to all stakeholders that this is an offer of lunch for every uh, primary school learner. As we do this, um, it means that we're going to double the amount of meals that we're producing from school kitchens, primary school kitchens. Um, some schools, of course, already provide 
uh, meals for all their learners, but the majority of schools only provide uh, for approximately half and sometimes less than half. So we've got capacity issues, um, uh, mainly in school kitchens, uh, to produce uh, the increased number of meals. Uh, most schools have their children eating in the dining room together, so that the, there aren't that many pressures on on the on the dining room. School kitchen staff will need longer hours uh, of work. Uh, more staff will be needed to to be employed, and some schools will cross the threshold for higher pay grade for producing more meals in a day and being responsible for more staff. Um, so. We are working with local food suppliers um, to increase the number of deliveries, the frequency of deliveries uh, into, the, into the schools, uh, kitchens, because of the sort of limited space, obviously, that we have to expand any storage. Um, Capital Works, uh, there are, you know, kitchens, there's some of the kitchens do need modernizing. Uh, and, uh, you know, we welcome the opportunity uh, to to do this in a, in a, in the most appropriate way um, for the for the initiative. Um, if we look at the way that the finances are going now, um, there have been two grants offered uh, for this financial year um, for the preparation work and uh, some some a capital grants that. Uh, has been offered uh, that can be displaced to be used next next financial year, uh, and then for the for the next financial year 22, 23, uh, there will be a grant a revenue grant uh, to cover the increased costs uh, of production and the loss of revenue. So bearing in mind uh, the Welsh government have asked us to phase. Uh, the the introduction, so providing free school meals for infants from September 2022, and then uh, for the juniors, the rest of the school from September 2023. So the infants only need to be covered in from September 2022 till April um, 2023 in, in that financial year. And then the following financial year, um, I, it's very very easy to get confused with all the financial years. Um, following financial year 23-24 uh, is when we will need the full year uh, finance for the infants and then the part year for the for the juniors from September to April. And then in 24-25, we will need um, the, the full amount for, for both the infants and the juniors having their meals so and from what we've seen of the proposed budgets from uh welsh government uh, that is the way that the the grants have been incremented um we will need to be aware and keep an eye uh, on school budgets and the schools will need to monitor um any costs that are that are not directly involved with with the meal production um such as um the, the utilities, water and energy, and, and the collection of waste. Um, and then, of course, going on to future years after the, after the, the, the three years, we would like to make sure the Welsh Government to provide the funding ring-fenced um, so, so as we can continue with this. Um, so th thank you very much. Thank you, David, for your report on this very important initiative. Uh, I'll open it up to questions. If you, if you could uh, take your... Um, that's it, thank you. That's it. Uh, Councillor Gromway Edwards. Yeah, Chair, thank you for letting me speak. I'm not on the committee. It's a very full and interesting report, and obviously it will uh, produce challenges in getting up to the capacity by, uh, to, by September. One question is as far as local produce. Um, I think there's a real opportunity here for uh, local produce, for sustainable product, and also looking at our carbon footprints. So I think it's essential that we engage now with food producers and uh, and um, preparers in the Conway area to try and make sure that they can 
take advantage of the situation, as I say, and reducing the carbon footprint at the same time. So is there any work being done on that aspect of engaging with our local food producers uh, to make sure that they are growing the crops, the vegetables and all the other things and produce that will be needed going forward? All right. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. The, the, there is an agency called uh, Larder Cymru, uh, and we have engaged with them. Um, uh, we're in a project at the moment, actually, with them and Colleg Llandrillo, um to look at the pro- food products that, that are suitable uh, to be served within the primary schools, and um, they're coordinating with the local producers through a local distributor so it's it's in its infancy at the moment but it's the it's something that has been um on the go for some years um so it's quite appropriate that this happens at this time so we're hoping uh, well we'll be able to report on that uh, later on in the year and hopefully that we can get the message out too the uh, the food producing industry in Conway that they can that it doesn't come as a surprise to them that they can start gearing up, uh, so you know to make sure their production meets the needs of our education needs. So thank you, Romwe. Uh, Councillor Ken Stevens. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. But uh, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we all know that uh, kids with uh, full stomachs uh, absorb knowledge better. We all know that. Um, the question I'd like to ask though is. Uh, I had school dinners at school and we were sort of shoulder to shoulder, you know, on bench seats kind of thing. How, how will this work out with social distancing if all the children are having a school meal at the same time? Thanks, Chair. Thank you. I don't know whether you can answer that one, David, but you can give it a go. Do you, do you want yeah. me to come in there? Do you want me to come in there, yeah. Chair? Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Stevens. I mean, yes, it's a, it's a very timely question, I think, in, in the current context. But um, what we're trying to do now is to reflect, really, the, the changes in society. So we know that, that the requirements and the mitigations are reducing for social distancing um, and mitigating actions out in society. So schools are slowly starting re- to reflect that now. Um, we're taking a cautious approach now in terms of... Um, Uh, updating schools risk assessments, um, looking at at what some of the mitigations can continue. So good hand hygiene, surface hygiene, the removal of the need for face masks within the classroom and owning communal areas. Um, And, you know, originally um, we we didn't uh, have those social distancing measures within the classroom setting because schools um, operated on a bubble system where cohorts of groups were kept together throughout the day and also at at, at end and start time of the school day. So um, the social distancing now is is not applying within a classroom setting. Um, That's that's a measure that that isn't now um, used. Um, But of course, we're looking at other more practical ways of ensuring that we can keep um, you know schools safe um, clean uh, hygienic um, and and use other ways of of, um, of mitigating against any nasty viruses so I hope that answers that question and learners will be sitting together I think we, we the purpose here is is to really celebrate what we're trying to do we want learners to have an opportunity to sit together, to socialise both with their peers and also with adults in the schools as part of their school day and develop really healthy good eating habits which are enjoyable which can then be transferred to the home and we're we're really excited about this initiative and it does go hand in hand with the curriculum and the four core purposes of the curriculum where we're trying to develop the children holistically and trying to get them involved in their own health and well-being so I think it's really exciting and, and, and I'm looking forward to being invited to some of these schools to be enjoying that 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 occasion with them. Takes all the boxes doesn't it? <laughs> thank you very much for the question Ken and thank you Mary, for the answer. Uh, could we move then to uh, Coletto Owens next? Thank you Chair. Can I just say uh, thank you very much, David, for your presentation. It sounds a very exciting project, huge undertaking, but I'm sure will have a massive impact on the education of our children, not only because you're extending it, but also because of the quality of that provision in Conway, having worked in several other authorities over, over my time. Conway is definitely up there. 
And it's not just the quality of the food, but also that support service with regards to health promotion, et cetera. So thank you for that. But could I just ask, do you envisage any impact on the midday supervisors in the school and the need for possibly more because of this? And if so, how will that be funded? Because I do appreciate that that funding does come direct through the school budgets. And so therefore, will there be an impact on school budgets? Lowry would like to answer that one, I think. Yeah, thank you, Colette. That's a really good question. And that's one of the questions that I asked David from the outset, really. Um, the number of learners, however, that will be um, the uptake of, of school meals won't change. You know, midday supervisors have always been required to support the number of learners and that, that have school meals or lunch boxes. So the number of learners needing support through a, through a lunchtime period won't change it's the actual staff within the kitchens that that's where the capacity issue is is uh, is required or that's where the that's where the increased capacity is required because it's the it's the serving of the lunchings so it's not that the supervision we've got that in place already it's the actual serving of, of the hot meals so that that's that's what we're looking at you want to come back on that Colette? No, and just and presumably then that will impact on the clearing away after school meals as well, which obviously will probably require further staff. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and you know, opportunities as well for staff. Um, so I, I know that, that David is working closely with our employability service in terms of, of recruitment. Um, and recruitment has been a significant issue within the catering field for some time. Um, and, and at the moment, we, we, we are hitting crisis point with that in terms of the number of cooks that are available. Um, so David's undertaking a piece of work on that. David, I don't know if you want to come in with any additional information on that. Well, no, I think you've covered it. Uh, but just to say that yes, the the clearing of the of the uh, of the lunch is is a part of of the of the kitchen um, service. So that that that'll that that'll be covered by the extra extra staff. Uh, but yes, we are experiencing difficulties and we're, and working hard to to get the staff in in place and. Um, finding at the moment that our own networking and and discussing it with with uh, people that we know is 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 probably the most fruitful uh, source of, of of recruits at the moment um but again yeah you know the employability uh, side of things is, is is great help to us as well uh so as yeah it, it, so long as we've got the message out there that this is something for the benefit of the children uh people respond to that and it's and it's really been quite it's, um, it's, it's good to be a part of this. It's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Colette, for your question and for, all, and for the answers. Uh, moving on to Councillor Susan Schotter. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you very much, David, for your presentation. I think this is an excellent offer for our children of Conway. And hopefully it will extend to such a degree that it might even encourage parents to cook and really appreciate, um, as was offered, the local products that Conway actually has. My question is around the concern um, of this inflation um, that is actually occurring at the unprecedented and expected rate at the moment. Um, has the grant offer been able to take this into account? And will it be able to take it into account in, in the future? Thank you, David. Uh, as uh, as things are, um, it it yes is is the answer to the to the immediate uh, the, you know the immediate future. But uh, after the following three years, nothing has been uh, made clear. So as we need we need to put pressure on Welsh government, and we need to make make it clear to Welsh government that uh, inflation needs to be part of the part 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 of their planning because uh, it's clear in both Scotland and and England that their their government uh, arrangements have have lagged behind on the inflation issue so as yes it, th th that is something that needs to be noted and needs to be kept on the table thanks thank you david chair can we note that in this meeting um so we can actually give support to david on the future not just the here and now but on the future of our grants Thank you. 
think that would be appropriate, Councillor Susan. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gaffrey Lewis. Yes, thanks, Chair, and um, uh, thanks for the presentation as well. And I welcome the initiative, like everybody else, I, I'm sure, uh, by Welsh Government. And also the way that Connolly has responded to Lowry and David and the team. Uh, wonderful opportunities here. Connolly and Susan have mentioned local produce. Uh, it, this is a long-term thing, isn't it? It's, it's not kind of for the next 12 months. Hopefully this is there forever, which gives us real opportunities for some long-term planning. So local produce is one. My question really or, or note is about staffing as well. Seems to be kind of a perfect storm of people getting to a retirement age just at the time when we need more um, kitchen staff and, and, and cooking staff. Is it an opportunity now to work, for example, on apprenticeship schemes with Landrisa, for example, uh, not just to cover the short-term gap that we'll have in in September coming up, but over you know the next five and ten years, and having real opportunities for young people to do apprenticeships linked directly to this scheme in Conway. Uh, thank you, and I, I think yes, we need to note that uh, it's not something that we've started to do yet, um, and it's uh, we have contacts with colleagues Andrew Claw. And as I say, the the Larder Cymru project is 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 a is a beginning. Um, so it, it could, if that is a success, um, and it, it it'll demonstrate the uh, the worth of of working in um, school school catering. Um, then hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, develop better links with with Colin Clandry and, and and investigate you know, the, the implications of a, a, an apprenticeship scheme. Uh, but as I said, at, the, at this moment in time, it, there, there isn't an, any any plan in place. Uh, it's, it's more of a, uh, it's one of the things that's on the agenda as a, as, as a, as a hopeful. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted there. Uh, content, Councillor Garfield? Yeah. Okay, uh, yes, thanks. Work. Again, I think one of these things that should be noted that we've raised it and that, yeah. that is a wonderful opportunity here to uh, look into the future. I know it's early days. Yeah. So, so notes for the Cabinet. Um, okay, I've got Councillor Julie Fallon. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, good point, Garfield. I think we do need to work on that, don't we? I think perhaps look at the Skills Board, maybe introduce it through there to a certain extent. And obviously there are a number of kids that take catering at GCSE um, in our schools. So I, I think there probably needs to be some work done around that as well as to whether there's opportunities there to sort of feed into some form of apprenticeship scheme moving forward. But yeah, if I'm still here, if you're still here, whoever's here after May, um, and yeah, I think that's something that needs to go on the agenda. But yeah, the same as so many other councillors have said, I mean, this is great. It's great that children are gonna have the opportunity to, to have a warm meal. And give them the opportunity, um, for, for those of you who are like me, sometimes my kids moan and say, oh, I don't like that, I don't like this. But actually, they come home from school and say, oh, yeah, I had curry today, I had this today. And I think, oh, OK, you don't eat that at home. So it's true what David has said, this, this is sort of really broadens um, the opportunity for kids to try different meals and hopefully sets them up for a life of, of, of healthy eating, doesn't it? So really great that it that it's coming in absolutely has to be funded it cannot eat into school budgets that's really important um and i think moving forward certainly i've raised that politically um with welsh government i know lodi has and i know that it, it's gone back through different channels um and that the message seems to be that it will absolutely be funded by welsh government so yeah i guess we watch that as we move forward but yeah brilliant brilliant opportunity to make sure our kids are, are well fed and um and, yeah um, and get the opportunity to sit together and try food together and um, and just yeah learn learn what for some might not be something that they necessarily experience at home. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that's really important, Garfield. I just wanted to come in on that point really and say that we all need to sort of try and encourage that um, that sort of forward path for for people who have um, an interest in in cooking in chefing in whatever um, and and yeah work on on those that take that opportunity at school so i'll bear that in mind if i'm still here thank you julie um councillor jeff gordy 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I just say, David and everybody, fantastic job. Done a lot, an awful lot to do by the sound of it. It's been some fantastic comments, but in reality, so many benefits and opportunities, uh, you know, we can't miss it. Um, I think the point on inflation, sustainability, and we're noting that is very, very, very important. I'm glad that was raised. I haven't got much more to say because uh, everybody said it, but I'll uh, move the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Geoffrey. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, Councillor Sue Shot, get your hand up. I'll second that motion, Chair. Oh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Lowry, you, you did have your hand up a moment ago. Uh, you take it down again. Did you wish to add something? Um, no, no, Councillor Fallon stole my thunder, I'm afraid. Um, no. I do actually chair the Skills Board. Yeah. Um, so we do have a, um, a forum um, where we can invite these discussions and, and conversations. And the principal of uh, College Andrisse is actually part of that board, the Skills Board. So we will definitely open that up um, and liaise with Libby Duo, our service lead for, um, for employability. Um, yeah, th th an awful lot of work to do um, in, in quite a short space of time. Um, and I think we, we just need to make a point as well that, you know, we, we're going to be doubling the size of the service in terms of our offer to school, in terms of the delivery um, and to ensure that, that this, this, this goes as, as smoothly as possible. So the infants will be in receipt of a, a free school meal uh, or, or a school meal, uh, all of them from September. And then, of course, the following year, all it will be extended out to the, to the junior age group as well. So we are involving our secondary colleagues now in these initial conversations because we know that that's going to reach them in time um, and, and of course this is this is um, a long-term project so yeah just so that members note as well that you know th this is a, a, a significant increase in, in in what we need to provide as a service um, and yeah we, we, we'll bring updates to you um, in the future once we've rolled it out to the infants. Thank you very much. Uh, if there are no further questions, I'll go to... Oh, hang on, Councillor Garfield. Oh, thanks, Chair. Just a technicality, really, on, on what we're voting on. Um, obviously, the recommendations are in 2.1 and 2.2, but there are three choices listed as well in 6.3, and I don't know if we want to agree on those choices, or are they... I'm just slightly confused. Bear with me a second. Thanks. It reads to me that uh, if we follow the recommendations, that actually addresses those. Okay. There's the no action in the hope that Welsh Government provides sufficient funds. Well, we've actually made, we're going to do the, rec well, hopefully both of the recommendations to Cabinet with the notes attached, which, um, which have been brought up in the questioning, I think. Okay. So the, the no action in the hope that Welsh Government, no, we're going to try and persuade them. Um, absorbing the cost of the initiative to ensure Conway learners get the maximum benefit. Uh, I think I think that's been addressed. Uh, and planned response to the government initiative by establishing a working group with representation from education, education finance, education catering. Uh, I think, Lowry, you, you addressed those points, didn't you? Yeah, so it is a good point, Councillor uh, Lewis. Um, the, the, the third point, we have actually um, put a working group together now. So we've already had an initial meeting um, and we, we've got a, a forward work plan in place so that we can make sure the key stage, stakeholders are part of that decision making process. Um, just with reference to the 6.2, absorbing the cost of the initiative to ensure Conway learners get the maximum benefit. Um, yeah, I think I think we're we're demonstrating that that we're doing that in terms of absorbing that that workload centrally. And um, Conrad Lewis, in terms of David's time, his team's time. Um, so yeah, th that that's just to be agreed. Um, and then six point one, no action in the hope of Welsh government provides sufficient funds to support the initiative. I think at the moment probably we don't need to do anything further with that. But I think the concern is two years, three years down the line, we need to ensure that this funding is ring-fenced and that it comes to the local authority and that it is ring-fenced for this initiative. So I don't know whether we need to reword that that first point with, with that. Yeah, I, th I think that would reflect the comments that have already been made as well, and yeah. in terms of putting pressure on Welsh Government. That I, I think those words, Gwneud Dyn, do nothing 
it is rather negative. Um, Would you like us point. to phrase something and circulate it to the chair and vice chair then for chair? It's approval? up to you, Phil. Yeah, I'm happy for that, uh, Garfield. Um, yes, it does seem a bit negative like that. I mean, you know, with our additional note that we intend to keep the pressure on Welsh government to uh, to fund this properly uh, in all its aspects, um, but we could perhaps with those options make it a more positive. Uh, 6.1, if, if you see what I mean, if, if you're happy with that. Yeah, yeah certainly, thanks. I'm happy then to yeah. um, support the recommendation. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much for bringing that up. It's always good to clear that up at the time rather than think about it later. Uh, so I'll take you to the recommendations. The recommendations have been um, proposed by um, Councillor Jeffrey and seconded by Councillor Sue Shotter, but the recommendations are on page 215. Uh, it's 2.1 and 2.2, and it's to note the Welsh Government initiative to provide a school lunch for all primary school learners. Knowledge that work is needed to clarify the financial position from a proposed uh, from proposed grants and for the provision to continue in the future, uh, and to acknowledge the work needed to prepare school kitchens, staff, governors, pupils, and parents for the provision of school lunch for all primary school learners. And this is a recommendation to cabinet with our additional comments, I think, uh, going with it. So a formal vote will be taken. So, Jane. Okay, members, thank you very much. Please indicate if you're for, against, or abstaining. Councillor Carol Beard? I think she may have left. Some members are having problems with their um, internet this morning. Uh, Councillor- Carol, Carol did actually say she had to leave earlier to uh, attend Another meeting, yeah. of course. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Phil Capper. Oblied. Councillor Jeff Corey. Or. Oh. Councillor Mary Doyle. Or. Oh. Councillor David Johnson. Or. Oh. Councillor Garfield Lewis. Aye. Oh. Councillor Peter Lewis. Or. Oh. Councillor Tristan Lewis. Oblied. Oh. Councillor James Lustard. James, are you there? I'll come back to you just in case. Colette Owen. Oblied. Councillor Sue Shotter. Oblied. Councillor Ken Stevens. Oh. Okay, Very Councillor James, more. are you there before I? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, he's there in spirit. He Not is. In voice. <laughs> okay, thank you, members. That was unanimous. Thank you very much, Jane. Uh, so I can confirm that vote. Um, so. That's the end of our meeting. So I'd like to thank all the officers who have presented today and the officers who have answered our questions. I'd like to thank you all for attending and we'll see you again in the